You might be wondering, Mira, what are you doing with a giant piece of housing insulation? I feel like I'm, you know, strumming on this like it's a guitar, except I don't know how to play an instrument or even read music. Basically, you asked me to do a larger needle felted wool painting of sorts. So we're gonna need this and you'll see why in a sec. The truth of the situation. What an actual background. It's beautiful. We're good. Throw back to that one time when we whipped out the felt pieces. Cause this is the base to the painting. I like this mustard one. Yeah. Ooh, look at that canvas. By the way, welcome to another video of Mira Christmas. <laughs> There's a video Monday, Wednesday, and Friday this week. So today's Wednesday. You may have already seen Mondays. If you have not seen the other needle felting video that I did, there's tons of wool here. And again, if you didn't see the other one, you might be wondering like, how, how am I gonna paint with this though? Let me show you, let me show you. You see that scary looking doodad right there? Yeah. So he's looking kind of dangerous and guess what? It's because he is. Last time I got hurt. So if you do this at home, be careful. Anyway, let's start. Ah, look at all this stuff. Last video, this was the little cushion we used, but we've upgraded to a giant piece of housing insulation because this is not big enough for bigger projects. I think we created a series on my channel. We also have lots of other fun tools in here. I loved doing this last time. I honestly, I just cannot wait to do it again. So let's begin. Oh, look at how satisfying all this wool is. Yeah, but wait, there's more. Again, I can never win. I don't even know what I want to paint, which could be problematic, but we'll roll with it, okay? All right, we have these two mustard baggies. I might use that for the background. Or should I use the gray baggies again? I think I'm gonna use the gray baggies again. Since it's a rainy, cold, dreary winter day, we are going to sip some hot chocolate and make our wool thing. I am so excited for this. Okay, first things first, let's get the wool out of the baggies. I'm kind of excited to do a giant piece. I'm not really sure what to expect, but if this goes well, then I want to do one that's maybe twice the size. So let me know if you wanna see a third video. I really enjoy this, so. Okay, the wild part at the beginning. Also, if you decide to do this, this tool can break very easily if you don't have some sort of like foamy surface underneath. So I'd highly recommend using like housing insulation or styrofoam. Isn't this the most satisfying thing? It's just so therapeutic and soft. Honestly, I think that's why I enjoy this so much. It's just so soft and it makes me feel cozy while I do it. P -p -p -p. Do you see the wool bits flying? <laughs> Highly recommend it. Hey. Oh my God. It's going good. I'm doing another one of these. Oh wow. Yeah, this is how it starts. Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. The options are wildflowers. Mm -hmm. Wildflowers are good. How about some purple ones? You want purple? Just not yellow. Okay. You don't want yellow? I don't know, it just doesn't seem like yellow. I just don't want yellow. I'm just gonna take this hair out of it. You don't so want me to like weave out. my hair into this? <laughs> Now, a lot of you told me in the last video you are not a fan of ASMR, and I respect that because I kind of feel the same way. Except that Clunatic Food Channel, you know what I'm talking about? Like, they eat like mermaids and aliens and stuff. <laughs> it's so funny. Anyway, I'm gonna voice over for a little bit while I watch cheesy Christmassy movies and stuff.
All right, so the part you see right now is actually, in my opinion, the most time consuming part of this entire project. And it is the noisiest because, well, for each one of these I've done, I've used a different foam surface underneath the sort of like wool painting. And you kind of have to break it in. And when it's like freshly not poked, it's really loud. And then it gets quieter as you go. But it's so satisfying to do this and to see all that fluffy wool turn into a flat underpainting. I am also gonna add a little disclaimer. So all the wool you see me laying down right now is like a bunch of different shades of gray and blue. And I'm just kind of patching it together because it's not gonna show anyway. However, if you do this, I would totally recommend going to like your local yarn shop and just buying wool because the kits on Amazon are way overpriced. Like they just are. So I'm trying to use up my kit and then I'm probably going to get bulk wool because I found a new hobby. This is so fun. Like it is the most relaxing thing. And I think it's just because of how soft it is and it makes me feel like it's just such a peaceful sensory exploration. There's no other way for me to describe it. Right now I'm feeling sunflowers, so yeah, let's, let's try that. All right, now we're getting to the juicy stuff, the actual painting. So right now I am laying down a bunch of blue and just poke, poke, poking it. This is going to be the sky. However, it is just the, I guess, base color because I am gonna do a little bit of blending with this sky and it's gonna be a very slight gradient. So you're gonna watch me blend. And surprisingly, there's a tornado siren going off right now. So if you hear that, um, it's Wednesday in the Midwest and that's what happens at noon on Wednesdays. All right, tornado sirens are done. Let's talk about blending in the sky. So blending with wool is actually surprisingly easy. You can see I did periwinkle at the bottom and then this light blue up top. Basically all you do is just thin out the wool and it creates a really nice gradient effect and it is way more effortless than painting or markers or something like that, honestly. <laughs> So now we are doing my favorite part of this entire painting probably, and that is these little like swoopy things to create texture. Basically I take like a tuft of wool and roll it up at a curlicue, and then I like poke, 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 boom, cloud texture. You'll see me repeat this a couple times throughout different elements of this wooly painting. So since I've officially done two landscapes now, what should I do for my third needle felted painting? Like I'm kind of thinking about making up little monsters or trying to do an animal or something. I don't know. What do you think? What would you create if you did a needle felted painting? That's a question. I know there are a lot of different styles and interests out there, so I'm curious as to what you would choose to create if you did this. Okay, I think we're about halfway done with this. We are on the green part now in the foreground. This tree line here was really fun. I implemented a lot of the same textures that I used in the clouds. I feel very relaxed. I've been really into spinning on my chair lately. So that's all. Back to the art. Good morning! 
days the next day. These things take a really long time to do, so it is a multi-day project. I am trying to drink less coffee, so today I am drinking blueberry lavender almond milk. Instead of two cups of coffee a day, I am now drinking one or a half cup. So that's cool. Let's get this party started. We're gonna add sunflowers today and I'm so excited for that. Oh my goodness. Question of the day. What is your favorite flower? I like to know people's favorite flowers and plants. So this is probably the weirdest part of the painting because you see that little gray strip at the middle part of the two green segments? <laughs> that is because I ran out of pretty much both of those shades of green. I did not have enough. And these Amazon kits, they give you a very, very small amount of each color. So it's good for small scale projects, but once you get to something this size, you're gonna run out so fast. So I just kind of made do because I knew when I planned this whole thing out that that whole gray strip would be covered with sunflowers. So yeah, I just started laying those down. This was very, very time consuming. Now the beginning of the painting when I did the underpainting part, that was time consuming. But I learned that this was more time consuming. <laughs> Basically, I did those little curly cue things again, similar to the clouds, but smaller. And then I poked it down and it made a really beautiful flower texture. This is what I have been doing for two or three hours now. You take this, you bend it, you twirl it around into this like cute, curly cute little ball, okay? And it forms like a flower sort of thing in the distance. This is therapeutic, all right, don't get me wrong. But after you've done like a hundred of these and you feel like you've hardly made any progress, you just kinda get to a spot where you're over doing all these little flower pieces. <laughs> and this is really fun, it is. But I'm ready to do the bigger flowers in the foreground, so yeah. Also, let me tell you something. Little like bits of wool keeps flying like up around my nose. <laughs> so I just kind of feel like I'm doing this. <laughs> Anyway, this is so fun and uh, I'm enjoying it though. It's very, it is very fuzzy art. This is very, this is fuzzier. I need an allergy pill. <laughs> this is more fuzzy than the other little wool painting that I did. However, this one is like way more fun, I think, because it's bigger. I feel like I can do more with it and I'm excited. So as I said, it definitely feels like I can do more with larger pieces. And that's mainly because as you see here, I am playing around with so much texture. And something else that gave me a lot of joy was just implementing a couple different shades of yellow into this for the sunflowers and just working with perception. I mean, there's, very, very clearly like a foreground, middle ground, and background with this piece. Now the first needle felting piece I did was also a landscape, so I could say the same. However, it was so small that I felt like I didn't get the same experience as I did with this one. I really got to play around with blending in the sky and all sorts of different techniques with this bigger piece. 
So that's why I keep feeling ambitious about moving up to larger needle felted pieces in the future. I think if I did a piece that is perhaps two, three, or four times the size of the current one that you're seeing right now, I could do a lot. And I would totally love to try that. I think doing pieces that are focused around nature are also easier because I feel like this is more forgiving if you don't have the proportions correct. So yeah. Now my friend Brenda, I mentioned her in my first needle felting video. She does animals and she is so, so good at it. And she also knows how to work with color so well. And the way she shades and stuff is so colorful and fun. So yeah, I will link her Instagram down below and you should totally check her out. I'll also put it up on the screen here so you can see it, but highly recommend. She is the person who encouraged me to try this. So I just want to give her some credit and yeah, I think you guys would enjoy her artwork as well. Now, another thing with texture, you can see I'm going back to the background and I'm layering more flowers over top of everything I already did. And that was such a fun way to just add a little bit more texture to this piece. I mean, this really is like kind of three dimensional. And when you run your hand across it, ah, it's just so cool. Oh my goodness, I think we're finally done poking this thing. I've been doing this for two entire days. Now I see a spot that needs touched up, so hold it. Let's peel this off. I know this part is super, super satisfying. Moment of truth. Do you see how satisfying that is? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Ugh, you know those like blackhead strips? It totally looks like we just pulled a bunch of oil out of our nose. Ewy. I just made that slightly disgusting, but anyway. I'm so happy I tried this again on a bigger surface. Like ever since I did that little one in my last video, I have been thinking about doing this again. It's just such a nice outlet. And it's different than the other kinds of art that I do. I just, I love how fuzzy it is. It's like fuzzy art, you know? So now we need to tuck the edges and polish this up. <gasps> I definitely have a new hobby. Like this is so enjoyable. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it makes you feel inspired. If you think we should make this wool painting thing a series, let me know in the comments down below because I really love doing this. Uh, this one was really fun. It took me like two days, but you know, really fun nonetheless. I will see you again on Friday because this is Mira Christmas. That just means we're having a video Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So there's one left in the week. Yeah, that's cool. All right, I love you guys. See you next time. Bye.